so we just saw how behavior of the channel is coded in python and simpy and we saw how these objects are tied together in a file called test bench so now let's go through the code for the sending application and the receiving application okay so both these codes are there in the file applications.py so let's take a look at this file okay so there is a class that implements the sending application and there's a class that implements the receiving application so the sending application just keeps sending new messages once in a while okay and it calls the function rdt send on the sender that's it and what does the receiving application do it just it's just a class which has a function called deliver data which is called by the rdt receiver object right and in addition to this we have some way of validating it for example to test the protocols that we develop we want to what do we want to do we want to test whether the protocols we develop actually deliver the packets correctly in correct order and they do not lose any packets correct that's what we want to ensure so what do we do is just for testing this we have the sending application generate some messages with some number for example in the payload it puts some numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and the receiving application checks if it has received payload 1 payload 2 and so on whether any payload is missing okay so this is just for testing so essentially our work was to develop the logic for this and this to be able to transmit packets reliably and in correct order so the the sending application and the receiving application have some code to actually test that because this is a dummy example that we have designed right now whose job is to actually just test the logic of these two things we can have a check where the sending application numbers the packets 1 to 10 and the receiving application checks whether all the packets have been received and so on but in the real world there is no way that the sending of application the receiving application actually you know can implement the test right is the job of the sender and the receiver which have been already tested and validated and then we plug them in into the real world situation in the real world applications right so here the applications are just designed for validating the rdt sender and the rdt receiver so let's look at the code for the sending application okay again it has this simpy environment it has a pointer to the rdt sender because it has to call the function send and it just keeps a count of the total messages it has sent so far okay this is initialized to zero now you start a simpy process so notice you will see this self.environment.process in several places you saw this earlier on the channel.py file what it does is it creates a new process it launches a process so whenever this function is called a process is created so notice that in the remember in the channel file each time a packet is to be delivered this process is created so there is one process created for every packet that is to be delivered and the process delivers the packet after a certain time and then ends when the process is destroyed okay so similarly the sending application creates a single process not one per packet just creates one process and it has a behavior what is the behavior of this there is a while loop there's an infinite while loop <coughs> so it waits for a random amount of time between one and five okay let's say it waits for it, it has t uh, initialized to any number between one and five and it waits for that many units of time so the control starts here and pauses here until some amount of time elapses so let's say t was 4 then you pause here for 4 units of time and then resume so when you resume you increment uh, you check how many messages are sent and that's what we are sending in the payload actually we just numbering each packet um, not the sequence number we are just putting some number in the payload okay so remember who uses the sequence number the sequence number is for the benefit of the sender and the receiver okay the sender and the receiver will use some sequence number and so on but the payload is not disturbed by these two okay the payload is uh, put by the sending application and checked by the receiving application so in the payload the sending application might put some number just to you know check we could have put anything in the payload 
so we create a message which is equal to the message number for now okay could have been anything this goes into the payload of the packet and we do rdt send message so we call rdt send with the message notice that we are not passing a packet we are just passing a message who creates the packet the rdt sender creates the packet so we are just saying what should be the payload okay the payload should be a number and uh, then uh, if this message was sent then uh, we increment the message count and so on that's it so this is a simple function of the sending application so every once in a while after every random amount of time between 1 and 1 and 5 units it sends a message by calling rdt send of the rdt sender object simple that's the function now what is the function of the receiving application okay receiving application has a function called deliver data who calls it so remember who calls deliver data it is the rdt receiver which calls deliver data okay to actually deliver some payload so when that happens what should the receiving application do it should just read the data and check if it is correct so it prints the received data and it does some basic validation so what does it do it checks if the data is equal to some number what is the number expected it's just the number of packets delivered so it's expecting first data equal to 1 data equal to 2 and so on with each packet if it is not equal then it prints an error and halts the simulation okay so this is a simple behavior of the receiving application so it also maintains a count of the total packets received for doing this checking okay so you notice the behavior of the sending application is just to send a message once every now and then so it uses rdt send message and the behavior of the receiving application is to just uh, have this function called deliver data which is called by the rdt receiver so we are done with this so what is remaining uh, we have now seen the behavior of the channel the packet and the sending application and the receiving application so now let's see the behavior behavior of the sender and the receiver so you may recall we saw several protocols we saw this template and then we first saw this very simple protocol rdt1 version 1 where we assume that the channel is perfectly reliable that means probability of corruption is zero and probability of loss is zero and for this the behavior of the sender was very simple and the behavior of the receiver was very simple so let's first code this very simple example and let's call it protocol rdt1 so that is what we have in this file protocol rdt1 it implements the code for the sender and the receiver for the simple case where we assume the channel is perfect okay so let's see this code in the beginning so rdt1 so this assumes a perfectly reliable channel so what should the sender do let us recall this now our job is to convert this state machine into python code so we have the code for a sender we have the code for a receiver when does the sender get activated when there is a call from above that means somebody calls rdt send who calls the application calls rdt send with some data what it should do is it should make a packet with that data and call udt send now remember we already have a template we have a function for rdt send we have a function to make a packet we saw it in the packet class there is a function to make a packet and there is a function to send it that is a udt send function on the channel so already these things are ready so we can actually fill this in as python code so let's see that okay so let us first import these things okay import the packet and create this class so rdt sender class okay should have a function called rdt send who calls this function the application when the function is called what do we do we create a packet packet equal to packet this function where is this function defined in the class packet so it creates a packet and the what should be the sequence number 
So it should be some sequence number. So we'll maintain a variable called sequence number for the sender. Okay, it's a variable here with initially initialized to zero. So initially it creates a packet with sequence number zero and payload equal to message. Okay, and then increments the sequence number. And now we have to send it across the channel. So self.channel. This is a variable which contains a pointer to the channel. Okay. And you remember the channel has a function called UDT send. So we send the packet. And we return true to indicate that this function successfully sent the packet. Okay. So remember this function is being called by the application. Similarly, the RDT sender should have another function. What is that function? RDT receive. Who calls that function? The act channel calls it with the packet. So what should happen when this function is called? So remember in protocol one, were any acknowledgements being sent? So this is protocol one. It assumed a perfectly reliable channel. No, there were no acknowledgements being sent. Absolutely. So the sender just sends the packet and the receiver, when it receives the packet, it extracts the data and delivers it. There were no acknowledgements being sent and received because this was a very simple example in the beginning. So the act channel is not being used at all. Okay. So here is the code. There is the RDT receive function, but it does nothing. There is just one thing which says pass. Okay. This function is not used in protocol one. So just ignore it for now. What does the RDT receive do? It waits until this function is called RDT receive. Okay, when this function is called, it checks that the packet is not corrupted. Of course, it won't be corrupted in the first example. Okay, we are assuming that the channel is perfect. If it is not corrupted, it will deliver the data. What, what is the data? It is the packet's payload. That's straightforward. Okay. So now we have seen the code for all of these modules. Now it's time to run the example. So let's run this example. Let's make sure that indeed the channel is perfect because this protocol one only works for a perfect channel. So where do we test it? We test it in this file testpen.py where all our settings are there. So this is like the file that contains all our settings for one simulation. So let us see, are we using protocol one? Yes, we are using protocol RDT one right now. Okay. And what is the value of PC zero, PL zero. Similarly, this PC and PL is zero. So it is indeed an ideal channel, but the delay is two. There is a delay of two units and we are using protocol one. Okay. So let us simulate this. So I open a terminal, okay, and uh, let's simulate this. So to simulate this, I simulate, I run Python, I run with Python 3, this file test bench, test bench, not pi, okay. So what do I expect? I expect simulation to run for 100 units of time and some print statements to appear. Whatever print statements I have put in the code, they should appear. So let's see, this has printed this output and notice the simulation ran instantaneously, okay? So let's go through this output and see what it contains. So at time one, data channel. So first of all, notice that there is two things happening at time one, okay? And they are printed in whatever order, but they actually happen at the same time, time equal to one, time equal to one. So actually we know that in code, first the sending application runs and it says sent data zero. And then uh, it is taken by the RDT sender and then a packet is created and it is sent on the data channel. So the data channel is printing UDT send call for packet. So packet zero is being sent and corrupted equal to false. Okay. So notice that who is printing messages, the sending application and the data channel. Who is not printing anything the rdt sender and rdt receiver are not printing anything so let us add some print statements first okay to make these things more clear let us add some print statements what do we want to print 
we want to print some messages here in the RDD sender. So when RDD send is called, it should print something. So it said maybe it should print sending packet on the channel, something like that. So let's have a print statement. Okay, we want to have the format of this print same like all of this. First it should print time, then it should print who is saying this and then it should print some important message and also the contents of the packet, right? So let me just copy the print statement from one of the other files. Let's copy it from channel. Okay, here is a print statement for the channel. So I'll copy this. It's okay to copy right now. So, huh. so here is the sender. So when it sends it over the channel, before it sends it over the channel, let me print something here. So it says print current time. Okay, it prints its name. Does it have a name? No. So we don't have a variable called sales.name. So instead of that, I will hard code the name. Okay, this is the RDT. Let me have okay, so RDT. Sender says sending packet on the data channel and then we print the contents of the packet okay fine and similarly we have a print statement at the receiver when it receives a packet so at time rdt receiver will print the received data and then we'll print the packet dot payload sorry it's the receiving application which receives the data but rdt receiver what does rdt receiver receive does it receive a packet or does it receive data it receives a packet right the data delivers a packet to it so received packet okay and then we print the contents of the packet. Received packet from back channel and then we print it. So let's run this now with added print statements and see if it, uh, so everything is fine. Okay, so we have run it ran perfectly fine, no issues. So now let's go through the output. Okay, so Here is interesting. This is interesting. There is no nothing happening at time one. What happened? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened at time equal to one. Why? In the previous example, something happened at time equal to one. In this current example, nothing happened. Is it all right or is that a bug? It's actually all right because if you remember, the sending application generates a random number between one to five. So sometimes that could take value 1, sometimes it could take value 5, sometimes it could take value 4. So in this example it took the value 1 and at the, after a delay of 1 it sent something. Right now this took the value 4. So that's all right. No issues. Okay. So let's go through this. At time 4 three things seem to happen. So first actually I know that this happens first right. The sending application says send data 0. Then it calls rdt sender rdt sender says sending packet on the data channel okay and then it calls the data channel so data channel prints udt send call for packet so on the data channel starts to send it what is the value of delay delay equal to 2 so after 2 units of time which is at time equal to 6 we see that the receiver has received packet and then the receiving application prints that received data 0. Now after a delay of let's say random number equal to 1. So after a delay of 1, the sending application sends data 1 and so on. Okay, so this is what we expect. Things are going on fine. 
so i i think it would be better if the sending application this statement was printed before right the statement should be printed before so let's modify the print statement let's open this file called sending application application.py where is the sending application printing statement it's printing at the end after everything was sent let's not do that let's do it before it tries to send something so let's do this okay and we'll do it as soon as it creates the message and tries to send it okay. so here is this sending application and let's have it sending data zero that's fine that's better to read similarly in the receiving application it's printed after the data is received and that's fine so now let's run the simulation again now we run the simulation that's better so the sending application first says sending data zero then it calls the sender okay the sender say sending packet on the channel then the channel is prints this udt send called and that's it and after two units of time it is received so the receiver says received packet and then it delivers it to the receiving application so this is as expected okay so we have successfully ran a simulation for this simple protocol rdt1 question is can we now implement rdt2 which has this mechanism for sending ac or nac